Welcome back. I'm back. You're back. All right. We back. Welcome everyone to this episode on the Ultimate Sports TV, guys. Today on the channel, we're going to be continuing my positional rankings in the middle of NFL ranking season. I've already done some other positional rankings on this channel. I ranked my top 10 quarterbacks and my top 10 NFL wide receivers. So you can go check those videos out on the Ultimate Sports TV here, guys. But in this video, as we'll do some more positional rankings in the future, today I'll be giving you my top 10 tight ends in the NFL, people. But before I give you my top 10 tight ends right now, now going into 2021 people please make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the ultimate sports tv because if you are not subscribed you're missing out on so much people because this is the hot spot get lots and lots of time from the ultimate sports tv spot with nba and nfl content so go ahead hit that subscribe button and join the TOS tv squad then when you're done with that please like this video for me share this video and youtube channel then comment down below your top 10 tight ends down in the comment section below guys but now let's head into ranking my top 10 tight ends right now going into the 2021 NFL season and first I'm going to start with my honorable mentions and my one honorable mention a guy who almost got into the top 10 but is at number 11 is Zach Ertz now he is just one year removed from having a 900 yard season and he only had 100 yards this year but he hasn't been that reliable as of late so Zach Ertz didn't get into the top 10 going into 2021 a guy that also didn't get in but I considered getting in is Janu Smith a guy who I think is an incredible run blocker and an incredible pass blocker and a guy who can make plays vertically downfield and is a really explosive tight end he just did not make this list because of his production only having about 400 yards and just really knowing who is in front of him on this list guys name some other honorable mentions in the comment section below but now let's get into the top 10 tight going into 2021 let's get it all right everyone starting this off at number 10 i got dallas goddard and at number nine i got hunter henry now when we're looking at number 10 with dallas goddard he's one of the more underrated players in the league just because he's been playing with zach Ertz his whole career but really the production he's put up has kind of gone unknown because for back-to-back -back seasons although it's not eye-popping he has put up solid tight end numbers with not being the biggest red zone or touchdown target, but he has had 500 yards in both of those years. And he's probably a top three blocking tight end in all of the league. While he does need to become a better touchdown threat, this guy definitely can get yards after contact. He's a solid vertical threat. And with more reps, I think the more production he will get as far as touchdowns go and as far as yards go. So I think Dallas Goddard is a rising star, and I think he's already done some good things based on what he's done already. And based on the potential, I think he's going to really fulfill next year. I think he deserves to be on the top 10 in this top 10 tight ends list. And when we're looking at Hunter Henry at number nine he's definitely not the most reliable tight end in the game which probably keeps him lower on this list because you know him being off the field really limits his production and being there for his team really but look when we look at hunter henry him as a route runner he's one of the best route running tight ends in the game he had a 600 yard season this past year which is pretty solid for any tight end in this league and he has above average speed which really gets him some good separation within his routes he is a really really explosive tight end and i can't keep these explosive tight ends out of the top 10 he's one of the most explosive tight ends in the league he's an incredible route runner and he's an incredible vertical threat now that he's on the Patriots I think he'll have a chance to shine knowing that Cam Newton and Bill Belichick do really well with tight ends I think he can have another pretty nice season let's just see him stay on the field more before he really moves up this list but he's a really explosive tight end and he has to be in the top 10 in my opinion all right, coming in at number eight, we got Noah Fant. And at number seven, we got Mike Gisecki. Now, when we're looking at Noah Fant sitting there at number eight, he is really a versatile kind of route runner as a tight end. You rarely see those kinds of tight ends. He can kill you underneath, and he's a very good vertical threat where you can use him anywhere on the field but listen if he had better quarterback play i think his numbers would be even better but look at his numbers from last year he still had pretty good numbers while his touchdown production could have been better he had over 700 yards and that's really good for a tight end so i think no offense we know he's explosive and he's a versatile route runner i think if he gets better quarterback play then he can really become a better player and he's a reliable target he led the broncos in receptions last year and he can get yards after contact so if he gets some better quarterback play then I think he can end up hitting the thousand yard mark and when you look at that spot of everything 
when you add a good quarterback play to his explosiveness as a tight end then I think the sky is the limit for Noah Finn and when we're looking at Mike Jacecki at number seven he's one of the most athletic tight ends in today's game he's incredibly explosive we know he can make any catch he can run any route on the field and he really is a freight train no matter where he is on the field Mike Jacecki is probably a top three most explosive tight end in today's game that's how good he is but a lot of people's problem with him and why he's not higher on this list is that he really does need to get better as a blocking tight end no matter if it's run blocking or pass blocking he needs to put more effort into it and he just needs to get better at technique and really being able to pass or run block that's one misfit he has in his game but he really is a freight train no matter where he goes on the field he's hard to take down he can make any catch he's a reliable target he is really, really dynamic and explosive. He's an incredible tight end. He will move up this list if he was a better blocker. I think he'll be a better blocker by the end of 2021. He'll be a number seven going into 2021 on this list. But he's still really, really an explosive tight end. All right, people, moving on. At number six, I got Rob Gronkowski. And at number five, I got TJ Hawkinson. Now, when we take a look at Rob Gronkowski at number six, he obviously is not the player he was that'll get you over 1,000 yards each season and it'll be a top three tight end. But he is still a top 10 top six tight end in this league he is still a big playmaker at the tight end position he's still really hard to take down he's still an incredible blocker at the tight end position and he is a reliable target for the Buccaneers game after game and he showed that last year and I expect that to keep going this year he is still an eye-popping target to a quarterback in Tom Brady that can definitely help the Buccaneers succeed on offense Gronk finished last season with over 600 yards and seven touchdowns so he is still a reliable number one tight end in this league and there's no way I wasn't going to put him in the top 10 because his production is still there and his impact as a pass catching tight end and a blocking tight end is still there and looking at TJ Hawkinson at number five he is really underrated he's flying under the radar and mostly because he was on a really bad Detroit team last year but he's still underrated he can carry a wide receiving core and I expect him to do that again next year we saw him have seven over 700 yards last year and have six touchdowns he was a great Great red zone target he was a reliable tight end he was fourth in tight end receptions and he was a middle of the field monster last year if you get this guy the ball in the middle of the field he is going to do some work he is a playmaker with the ball in his hands and he is an exceptional blocker at the tight end position so more reps this guy got we saw that the better he will get in the more production he will put up and Hawkinson showed you last year that with the ball in his hands knowing he is a playmaker and can make plays with the ball in his hands he has promised to carry a receiving court and do a lot for your offense all right squad moving into the top four at number four we got mark andrews and at number three we got darren waller now when we're looking at mark andrews sitting there at number four when you're a tight end in the ravens offense you are asked to be a pretty important piece to that run heavy offense that will ask for a playmaking tight end You've got to make sure you run block and pass block well, and you've got to be a good pass catching tight end in the middle of the field or do in the pass game whatever the scheme asks you to do. When you look at Mark Andrews, he's kind of exceeded with that system and those coaches in Baltimore really have needed him to do. He's been an exceptional pass blocker and run blocker, and he has really been an exceptional pass catcher in the middle of the field, but really anywhere else on the field and being a reliable target for Lamar Jackson. He really fits the Ravens offense, and he's really a significant piece to that offense. He's been an incredible red zone target. He makes plays all over the field. He makes incredible catches. He's a reliable target. He had 700 plus yards left last year and had seven touchdowns guys and the year before that he had over 10 touchdowns people but one thing that concerns me about Mark Andrews is in the big moments when he's really dropping those passes that's certainly something he needs to work on being a reliable target in those big moments but overall he has really been what the Ravens offense has needed and that's why he is at number four now when we're looking at number three with Darren Waller he is a tight end he's the size of a tight end but he plays like he has a skill set of a wide receiver. Darren Waller is an incredible tight end. He's an incredible, incredible playmaking tight end. And like Mark Andrews, his offense has asked him to do a lot because of the situation that they're in 
with all the weapons that their quarterback has around him. And Darren Waller has stepped up to the plate as an incredible playmaking tight end that can do anything all over the field. And he has stepped up as a pretty nice pass blocker and run blocker in that offense, having over a thousand yards, having about 10 touchdowns, nine, 10 touchdowns last season. Look, we usually see tight ends matched up with linebackers, but because Darren Waller is so fast and plays so much like a receiver, when he's lined up against a linebacker, it's really a mismatch. Darren Waller has been an incredible playmaker for that Las Vegas Raiders offense, and I expect him to keep going. With his athleticism and his dynamic explosiveness, he's kind of hard to stop sometimes because he's all over the field, and he's really hard to stop no matter where he is on the field. So, Darren Waller, he's number three on this list, and Mark Andrews, he's number four. Now, let's get to number one and number two. At number two, I got George Kittle, and at number one, I got Travis Kelsey. Now, I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on this all day, every day with who was going to be number one, George Kittle or Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. And there are numerous reasons why you could pick any one of these guys to be at number one. And when we look at George Kittle, he certainly is probably the best blocking tight end, run blocking or pass blocking in the league. And we know what he can do as a re dynamic receiver for his offense knowing what he can do after the catch, knowing what he can do as an elusive tight end. But when we look at Travis Kelsey, man, he is also one of the best tight end blockers in the league. He was one of the best run blockers in 2020 last year. People don't like to give him enough credit for the blocking he does as a tight end. He's one of the best blocking tight ends in all of the league. But when we look at the passing stats, man, yes, George Kittle set the record for tight end yards one year at one point. But guess who came up and set that record again? That was Travis Kelsey, who surpassed 1,400 yards as a tight end and ended up setting that record. There's just levels to this in the NFL, man. I just think that Travis Kelsey is just a bit levels higher than George Kittle as a receiving tight end. Both of them are absolutely great receiving tight ends. I just think Travis Kelsey is just a tad bit better than George Kittle is. He's had 4,546 yards since 2018. That's the most in the league since 2018. Since 2013, no tight end in the NFL has had more contested catches than Travis Kelsey's 48 contested catches. Travis Kelsey had a league high of 138 first downs versus primary zone coverage. Travis Kelsey has 17 games with at least 100 receiving yards since 2018. He's the only one to do that. The past three seasons, he has a league high of 126 receptions of at least 15 yards. He's the only tight end with the top 12 mark in yards after catch per reception. He's had 106 minutes tackles since entering the league, and only Antonio Brown, Jarvis Landry, and Golden Tate are ahead of him since then. He also set the tight end record, like I said before, for most yards in a single season by a tight end, people. So not only did he do that this year, and he had a great season in 2020, he had a better season than George Kittle in 2020. And although George Kittle was hurt, we can't ignore the fact that Travis Kelsey did have a better season than George Kittle in 2020. So that's another factor that really puts him ahead of George Kittle. But to me, yes, he's a good run blocker and pass blocker like George Kittle is. And George Kittle may be better in that category. But when we're looking at a tight end and a tight end that can really transcend you in the pass game, Travis Kelsey is just a level ahead of George Kittle and that's why I think he's the best tight end in the league and he's one of the greatest tight ends of all time people this has been my top 10 tight ends going into 2021 right now people give yours in the comment section below Travis Kelsey to me is the best tight end out of all the NFL people other than that this is Malik Hicks aka the Ranker of the Ultimate Sports TV signing off peace out and I'll see you on the other side